Now, the sandwich chain, Subway, is looking for that special sauce to reinvigorate the brand as the nation emerges from the pandemic. It's rolling out a new m menu, kind of wholesale. New items there, a nationwide delivery service, and an advertising campaign featuring some pretty major sports stars. I'm pleased to say joining us now, Subway CEO John Chidsey. It's great to have some time with you. 56-year brand history. This is the biggest overhaul. What were consumers demanding of you? Because it looks as though if you've got athletes involved, it's all about health, freshness. But how healthy and how fresh is it really going to be, John? Yeah, it's a great question. When this management team came in the last 18 months or so, um, really to lead this transformation or this next transformation for the brand, if you will, one of the first things we did was consumer research, talked to all of our franchisees in the system, and really a consistent message came across, which is we hadn't had a lot of food innovation in the last five or six years. People were looking for more craveable food. So I think one of the easiest and, and quickest ways to send a great message to consumers that we hear them is to really go back and look at all our core items, which we did. And as you said, it's one of the biggest, uh, well, not one of the, it is the largest really rebranding uh, effort and one of the largest product efforts out there. So you know, new bread, new turkey, new ham, new chicken, new steak, new smashed avocado. I mean, we really went across the menu and substantially upgraded our core items. So I think we're sending the right message. Our new products are very craveable. I think it really answers what consumers have been hoping to see out of Subway over the last few years. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good lineup of celebrities you have attached to this, primarily celebrity athletes, Stephen Curry, Serena Williams, Tom Brady, Charles Barkley, uh, a few others here that I'm sure I'm forgetting. So certainly going to draw a lot of attention to Subway. Uh, John, this is, of course, is a restaurant chain uh, that, at least as far as its footprint, has actually been uh, somewhat shrinking, at least relative to some of your competitors here. And I'm wondering if you have plans to reverse that. Are there plans to open more subways to increase the footprint? Yeah, sure. Um, that's another good question. Internationally, Subway has a tremendous growth opportunity in front of it. While we still have 17,000 restaurants outside the U.S., we could have multiples of that, um, and we will aggressively go after that over the next 12 to 24 months. In the U.S., our focus is less on restaurant count and more on system sales growth. We're really trying to pivot from being a development organization to more of an experience-oriented organization. And so, to me, it's not as important as how many units you have in the U.S. And yes, there's still non-traditional opportunities that we can go after, but it's not really all about that unit count. It's more important just to grow system sales, top-line sales inside the existing locations to ensure that our franchisees are as profitable as they can be. Does growing top line sales mean that you stick to the jingle that we all grew up with, at least the $5 foot long, which was an affordable way to, for me at least, I was able to have lunch and dinner off of that because <laughs> uh, it was so filling and then affordable. Are you able to still maintain relatively low prices for consumers or is some of that food inflation having to be passed on to consumers? Yeah, well, we're still known, if you look at the brand attributes within the brand, value is definitely one of our strongest attributes, and we definitely do not want to lose that. You know, having said that, we worked really hard to offset, as you can imagine, when you upgrade the quality of most of your items, uh, we tried to offset as much of that as humanly possible with other changes, be it, you know, alterations to packaging, et cetera. And we had done a good job of that, obviously, then coming out of COVID. And, you know, we've been working on this brand transformation for the last 12 to 16 months, um, COVID and the, and the inflationary pressures that came along there, that's really different from what we were trying to offset. So we feel that no different than everybody else does. I think the real question, as your previous guest was talking about, is, you know, how permanent are these inflationary hikes? How sustainable and how high are they? Obviously, if they persist and if they continue at a, you know, relatively high level, ultimately some or a large part of that will have to get passed on to consumers. But I think it's really too early to tell that yet. Talk to us about the conversations you're having with your franchisees. You're a man who's run global franchises for a long time over at Burger King. You, of course, were at Avis, Budget, rent -a car for example. But what are they saying to you right here, right now, about well, some of the wage pressure as well, some of the pressures from the labor force? Are they finding it hard to get people to stay on to work all the hours that they need at the moment? Because what we hear anecdotally is, well, people don't want to come back to work for the sort of price point in which they were previously being given. Yeah, I mean, the story obviously varies all around the world. Again, we're in over 100 countries. But if you're speaking about the U.S. specifically, yes, I mean, it, it is a challenge. Um, there's no doubt about that. And it's not just in the quick service restaurant space. As, as you all know, it's really across multiple, multiple sectors. I would say uh, two things. One slight advantage we have is if you look at the footprint of a Subway restaurant, we're obviously smaller than a lot of our you know, competitors like a McDonald's or, or elsewhere. Therefore, we need a lot less labor. 
But having said that, even if we need, you know, a quarter of what they need, it's still difficult to find labor. One of the things that we got lucky on was with this refresh, we knew we were going to have a big surge in traffic um, in the late summer, early fall as we launched this. So we aggressively uh, really went after trying to get ahead of the staffing. So we launched ads on our digital app to push for employment, picked up about 40,000 applications in May. So part of it was just fortuitous timing that we're somewhat ahead of that curve. But I'll be honest, we feel it like everybody else does. What about some of the options for, I guess, getting Subway or getting a sandwich or getting anything out of uh, one of your stores here? Uh, a lot of restaurants, including the ones that are in the quick serve space, were relatively quick to sort of embrace delivery, particularly uh, once the pandemic hit and we were all limited in where we can go here. Do you plan to push your franchisees a little bit deeper into delivery, into that space? Absolutely. I mean, we, we were already doing that. COVID obviously was is an accelerant there. So our brand obviously has about 10% or less in terms of drive-throughs, which is quite different than you know the people in the hamburger space. So we had to be creative and nimble. So we stood up a contactless uh, curbside program basically out of thin air relatively quickly, which is not easy when you have over 20,000 locations in the U.S. But if you look at things like digital sales, our digital sales are up about a little over 200% since 2019. Our third-party delivery alone is up over 260 percent. So we've had huge increases um, in those uh, what used to be considered alternate channels but are fast becoming in our industry or their mainstream channels. Consumers really are shifting their preferences towards more healthy alternatives. You've seen the rise of plant-based meat products, for example. Do you have any plans to focus more on that, vegan options to meet some of that consumer demand? Yeah, we've got lots more innovation coming. Well, first of all, we have bowls, we have wraps. We've really tried to be innovative over the last year, year and a half anyway, to ensure that we have things for all consumers, all different options. But we talk about this refresh is really uh, 1.0, and it will really be a multi-year journey. We have lots of new news coming in the next six to 12 months that are already laid out. And so you'll continue to see innovation occur. And a lot of that, or some of that, a lot of that will be in the areas that you just discussed. So I, I think we're definitely headed in the right direction to make sure we're a great choice for everybody. Quickly, John, tuna. Any myths there? Is it 100% tuna? Because I noticed that you didn't say that's changing. You said turkey's changing, beef's changing, but the tuna's staying the same. Tuna is absolutely staying the same. It is 100% real tuna. Um, obviously, as you noted, you know, we've been working on these changes for 12 to 15 months. Tuna is the one thing, you know, we did not need to change or want to. We're very proud of our tuna. Um, I always say, you know, go, go back to the science. And if you follow the science, once tuna is cooked, its DNA becomes denatured. And even the New York Times article said, you know, once it's been cooked, it's impossible to determine. We also have a website called SubwayTunaFacts.com. If you really want to know all about the science, feel free to go there. You'll know more than you ever wanted to know about it. But, yes, we absolutely love our tuna, and we're not planning on making any changes to it.